Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're at Form Next. So this is Form Next 2022. Uh, there are some amazing manufacturers here with loads of cool new tech and loads of fun things to look at and touch. So we are gonna take a look around, do some interviews and show you some of the massively cool stuff that is coming in the next year. Hello guys and dolls, so we're at the WASP booth and we are looking at giant deltas. So these machines are absolutely huge. Tell us a little bit about how big you've managed to get this. Well, this is one of the biggest uh, delta printers in the, comp in the manufacturing uh, companies. Ah, oh, come on. That's right. Do again. No, no. It's, That's fine. It's fine. Sorry. Anyway, um, uh, this machine is able to print one meter in diameter and one meter in height. Right. Um, and right now we're printing with a recycled polypropylene from fishing nets. Excellent. So that's 100% recycled material. You can see here what's about to print. Yep. Let me show you. So this is what you printed. So how long did this take? Well, this was a print that we made overnight. So like eight hours. Eight hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it takes me 45 minutes to do a Benchy. <laughs> This is yeah. larger than a benchy. Yeah. If we were doing it for scale, it's roughly 250 benches high. It's very large. What layer height are you doing on these? Well, here we're uh, uh, about 1.2 millimeters as layer height using a five millimeter nozzle. So that's not even really, I mean, obviously it's printing at speed and it's putting a lot of material through, but 1.2 millimeters in layer height is only really sort of five or six times more than you would normally do on a domestic printer. So how are you getting that much speed? Is it just because it's a Delta and Deltas are just faster? Well, we also developed this new extruder able to um, print uh, at an output of 3.8 kilograms per hour. Wow, with, okay. With um, a system that we actually patented, so we received the, the patent, it's called Firecap. Right. And um, it's a system that heats up only um, the layers so you don't need to heat up the whole chamber. This way you can keep the machine simple, uh, not too expensive, and at the same time obtain very high temperatures uh, to uh, guarantee uh, infralayer adhesion. So basically right now we're printing polypropylene. You can see there's, it's no, uh, there's no warping at all. And this is just because we're using the fire cap system and uh, the vacuum build plate as well. So, so one of the issues a lot of pellet extruders have is what I like to call the terminator problem. So the terminator problem is that you can melt everything down relatively easily, but keeping it liquid is really quite complicated. After a point, material starts to burn and you, and you start to lose material, lose quality, lose consistency. So with the system that you've built, ultimately it only ever really is melting the part that it needs at that precise moment and then it's just constantly flowing through. So keeping that flow rate nice and consistent is really impressive in a machine of this size. Um, I think if I brought this home, my wife would probably leave me. I'd probably be quite, you know, I'd probably be fairly happy for a while, but then all my clothes would get dirty and I wouldn't really have anything to wear. So that'd be bad. But let's take a look at some of the industrial stuff. Okay, so tell us about one of the best looking printers at the show this giant light up TARDIS cupboard, what, what is it? And how do I get one? <laughs> well, this is the first time that we show this machine. Uh, so it's a brand new machine that we bring here in Form Next 2022. Uh, 20, um, it's a pellet based machine with liquid cooled extruder and fire cap system on the, on the head. So uh, what we're printing now is uh, ABS and the print area is 60 centimeters in diameter and one meter in height. Right. Um, you have the, the pellet tank here and uh, the new system that delivers um, a very strong extrusion and um, of course um, low maintenance on the, on the machine. You know that Delta printers are uh, very easy to maintain. Yep. Um, so Delta printers are my favorites for a few reasons. One, they look really cool, like a spider on a hot plate all the time. So I, th I love the way that deltas move. But as well, bearing in mind this is an industrial machine printing industrial materials, I can stand here and there's no noise. So you can see there's acoustic matting inside of the machine. This is very thick glass as well. Um, and 
normally when you're next to industrial machines, you can barely hear yourself think. You go into an industrial, any industrial complex, and it's just noise, you have to wear ear defense and everything else. This is something you could actually just have in your office and it wouldn't disturb anybody. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about the extruder. So you've got what appears to be a gun from Men in Black, yeah. or is, this, <laughs> is that what it actually is? <laughs> yeah. So, so this is the noisy cricket. <laughs> so this is part of the this is part of the the fire thingy, yeah. Let's say this this is the little brother of this extruder. Right. So it's uh, an extruder, pellet extruder, one of the smallest pellet pellet extruder right. that we have on the market. And we're using this on the 4070 HDP, another machine that use a pellet based extruder. So what you see here is very compact and uh, um, very powerful extruder, pellet yep. extruder. So is this one water cooled as well, or is this? Oh, that's no, heavier than I was cool. expecting. This is air cooled. Right. Yeah. So this one's just regular. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can yeah, see there. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, it just looks so. I mean, it looks industrial. It just <laughs> looks really cool. So this is about what half the size of the one that's in here, give or take. Yeah, more or less. Yes. So what's the flow rate that this is getting through in an hour then, or a minute? Oh, well, this is, right now we're printing at 0.5 millimeters layer height with a 2 millimeter nozzle. See, and that's just not that far away from domestic. Yeah, like, exactly. You exactly. know, that's, to be able to do that on a pet, so again, this is another point that we'll make about pellet extrusion. Generally speaking with pellet extrusion, you have to have like a giant bored out nozzle so that you can just force enough material through it. And again, it comes down to melting too much material and you have to have a very high flow rate. Otherwise everything just clogs up and gets all gunky. But you're managing to do pellet extrusion in obviously a giant form factor, but you're still keeping that, you're still keeping that quality that you would get out of, out of pretty much a domestic 3D, sort of a, a regular domestic Printer, like that's, that's our main insane. Focus, exactly. yeah. That's insane. And then obviously you've got, and we'll, we'll show them in a minute. We've got the clay machine as well. That's that's over there, as well as a concrete printer. With your aim eventually being to start on a on a much larger level, 3D exactly. printing yeah. concrete I'll, I'll sustainable homes. Exactly. So I'll that's show you so cool. Our, uh, entry level uh, 3D printer for concrete. That's one of the most, <laughs> one of the biggest entry level. Printer. Right. That's excellent. Okay, let's go and check that out. So this is the next level. So this is a clay printer that is also autonomous. So talk to me about this. Yeah, right now what you're seeing is a production kit for uh, clay printing. Uh, this is our uh, 4000 clay machine. And here you're seeing with uh, uh, changing plates. So what happens is when the print is done, um, another plate will come over and uh, you can print 24 hours. So, um, so how many plates can this do at what like before it before it needs to be attended by someone? Well, you can do this as big as you want. So right. basically, um, depending on how many uh, build plates you put, maybe 15, 20 build plates. Oh, that's so cool. So again, it's like we spoke about earlier. There's a reality that when it comes to autonomous printing, when you're trying to clear a build plate, it's downtime and it's a human interaction point, which means that there's a high level that that person is probably gonna be drunk or uh, is gonna break the machine or fail or do something wrong. And any time your machine isn't being used, it's costing you money. So this is all about return on investment. This is about making sure that you are maximizing your workflow as much as possible, pushing through as much material as you can, and then you can have multiple people who come in on shifts to deal with the, the, the material and the, and the end products that come out. And this is only possible with uh, this system as well. It's something that we invented. Yep. We created an autonomous continuous feeder. Right. So instead of uh, um, filling the tanks with clay as we used to, we now have a machine that you're able to put the material inside uh, while printing. So you don't have to degas the material, you don't have yeah. to uh, prepare the material before printing. So it's, everything is much more easy. Amazing. And it's so cool that this is, so I mean, we, We've said before on the channel, 3D printing can do anything. It shouldn't necessarily do everything. Um, there are times where people really try to force 3D printing into various applications and you're just like, ah, oh, there's so many easier ways to do that than there is. Like a lot of people say, why aren't we 3D printing cars? And the answer is because A, it's really hard. And two, there's no point. 
it's really easy to print to deal with a car as part of like an injection mold or as part of a of, of, of a metal form factor it's really hard to 3d print it there's no benefit but stuff like this sort of these new levels of innovation are really cool and I, is this sort of the same kind of principle that ends up being used when you scale this up to doing the when you're doing yes, the house yes, printing because yes. this is again the idea that you effectively bring in a giant mixer and then that mixer I mean, should we just scale this up really yeah, big yeah, to house yeah. size and then exactly. you just print it? That's correct. We designed this machine in 2012 because uh, we already had the, uh, the focus on uh, uh, house printing, but we didn't know how to do that. So we decided to do a small machine, able to do the same stuff, to, be, uh, to print with the same material, and then to scale it up and see uh, what were the problems, what were the issues. So um, at the end, um, we're presenting here a machine that uh, can uh, print uh, clay very, very smoothly. So may I show you a, a final piece of fire? Print? Absolutely, go for it. So this is why that, um, that continuous printing is so important and why those extra beds are so important. Obviously with clay, that isn't the end of its journey. This is the end of its journey where it needs to be baked and it needs to be solidified and goes into like cool things. But I mean, you have made stuff here that is geometrically perfect. I mean, there are no flaws in the side of this at all. It is really, really nice. There's also no bottom to it, which I admit <laughs> makes it a tricky vase to use, but there we go. Um, so this one does have a bottom. There we go. It can do bottoms. You, you think it didn't, but it can. So, uh, so yeah, you can do like these really cool vases and then you've actually got glazed, like glazed clay after that, something that is ready to be sold to a client yeah, exactly. straight out of the gate. Exactly. So at the end, once uh, the print is over, you have to dry uh, the, the piece and then you have to fire it, uh, depending on the material that it is. Like right now we're printing red clay. So uh, as you can see here, we're experimenting with the pattern. There's a lot of things that you can do actually. Here is some glazing. Uh, these are all uh, standard process that you already find in artisan um, uh, craft. Amazing. Well, guys, we'll do. We'll show. We'll put up some quick footage of other things that these guys are doing. They've got a cool plasma laser thingy and a jiggy over there that looks like a wind that looks like a turbine from uh, from a, from a spaceship. And then they've got something else over there that's even that's the bigger brother to the to the extruder we just showed. So we'll show you that as well. So go and check these guys out. The link will be in the video description. We'll catch you on the next one.